So uh, um, I'd like to call the meeting of the executive committee um, in order. It's March 2nd, 2022. I'll roll call, please. Bates? Bates here. Berman? Berman here. Davis? Davis. Ford? Cross? <clears throat> Gums? Gums here. Kenyon? Here. Caius? Martin? Martin present. Molina? Molina present. Sanchez? Sanchez here. Strathman? Strathman here. Sturgis? Teppi? Teppi here. Chepro? Chepro present. Here. Here. You have a quorum. Very good. Uh, Mr. Shadel, could you please lead us in the pledge, Carl? Oh, I'm That's sorry. Tough. I don't have my glasses on. Oh. Mr. Mark, Rickard, maybe? Mark, please. Mark. <laughs> My apologies. I'll put them on. <laughs> I'd be happy to be Carl any day. So. Thank you. Sturgis I, is present. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, God, indivisible, and just. Thank you. Thank you, I can see it now. May I please have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of February 2nd, 2022? Nice moves. Shepro seconds. Right. Mr. Shepro seconds. Um, are there any changes or edits to them? One comment maybe, the, uh, as I was re reviewing them, I believe it, it on our votes, we have, uh, like for finance here, I'm sorry, I'll pull it back up here again. Uh, we have a, a vote at the end of the um, resolution one through 16, but it doesn't say anything uh, in the uh, actual voting moved forward to with roll call vote at, to in, indicate that it was uh, items one through 16. I wonder if it wouldn't be uh, clearer in the future if someone's looking back on this to have that included in there. I'm at Jeffro. Yes, Mr. Shepard. I think actually that would be a good correction to the current minutes. Okay, very good. I think it. I think it. It would be a important explanation yeah. from a technical standpoint. One through sixteen, and, and then a human services one through two, and and thus, I think that was the and moved all together again in uh, transportation. Just a, a little item so that 10 years from now, when they look at they say, well, they just voted on one of those. Things. If that's an amended motion, I'll amend my second. I moved to, yeah. Okay, very good. And you have that? <clears throat> okay. Um, are there any other changes? If not, clerk, please call the roll. Bates? Uh, not, and as amended. As amended. As amended. Yes. Okay. Berman. Berman, yes. Davis. Davis, yes. Ford. Ford, yes. Cross. Yes. Gums. Gums, yes. Kenyon. Yes. yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Martin. Martin, yes. Molina. Mm -hmm. Molina, yes. Sanchez. Sanchez, yes. Strathman. Strathman, yes. Sturgis. Yes. Teppi. Teppi, yes. Shepro? Shepro, yes. Here up. Yes. Passes. Very good. Is there any public comment? <clears throat> Is there any online? None? All right. Uh, we're on to the monthly financials. Mr. Onsick? Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Included in the agenda packet are the regular monthly financial reports for the executive committee for the month of January. I do not have anything additional to um, report to you since my report to the Finance Committee last week, but I, I know that you do have several resolutions on the agenda for this morning, um, some of which you may have questions for, so I'd be happy to answer any of your questions when we get to those items on the agenda. Are there any comments on any of this? If not, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Onsick. Is there any old business? Seeing none, on to new business. 
All right, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the legislative liaisons. I'm not asking for a vote. It's just informational at this point. Good morning, Ms. Mosser. We talked about the governmental liaison, um, often called the lobbyist, and I brought that up <clears throat> to uh, the legislative committee, and I'd like to introduce it to you as well, and then we can move forward with it um, at the committee of the whole, uh, future meeting at the committee of the whole, um, if um, by uh, your advice right now, if you'd like to do this. A uh, little explanation for those of you who have <clears throat> not have had the opportunity to work with a government liaison slash lobbyist, that individual or company firm uh, will become a single advocate for Kane County in legislative matters that are both within the state as well as federally. We are one of the few counties, as a matter of fact, the only county uh, in the surrounding areas that does not have a governmental liaison. Uh, here are the following uh, counties that do have it. Cook, of course, has several. Uh, DuPage, Lake, Will, McHenry, McLean, uh, uh, Kendall County, DeKalb County, and Kankakee County. All are represented by a <clears throat> government liaison or lobbyist. Kane County is not. Uh, Kane County did have a lobbyist um, during Karen McConaughey's term in office. And when my predecessor came on, if you remember, uh, he canceled that contract, saying that he could do it on his own because of his wealth of experience in Springfield. I believe he appointed Matt Hansen and Jared Sanchez uh, to do that work in, in Springfield, uh, but it is impossible to do that work on a part-time, limited basis when you are just going there in my opinion, to drop off literature about the county. Not only do we have to be responsive to our current legislators, which the legislative committee is uh, excellent at, we have a good working relationship with all of our elected officials, uh, both state senators, uh, our congressmen uh, and women, um, et cetera. Uh, but what we don't have the ability to do is to have that same relationship with all the other elected officials. Because if a bill is to be passed or advocated for Kane County, we need to have a consensus among many of them, not just a few. And that is something that a lobbyist government liaison could do for us. So we're missing out on opportunities, in my opinion, could bring resources and good legislation to Kane County, an individual that could be our voice down there. So in my opinion, we need to have representation uh, for not only our own representatives, but to develop that coalition. And I'd like to talk about this further. Madam Chair Gums. Yes, Ms. Gums. Um, yes, thank you for bringing this up. Um, I spoke with many members of the legislative committee. We'll, we will be doing a presentation on this issue and um, hammering out the process to go forward on it. Um, I agree that it's a great opportunity. I think all the committee members agree that this is a pretty good opportunity. So we'll be presenting at legislative this month. Uh, very good, thank you. Um, I have a copy of the resolution uh, that was dated uh, March 10th, 2009, that was to be signed by Karen McConaughey, of course, and Jack Cunningham. Uh, the former firm that was used was Rauchy and Sullivan Strategies. But a question was asked through legislative, who does this company or lobbyist report to? And I'd like to um, read what is uh, what uh, was in the original or the professional services contract. I don't know if this is the original, there may have been others before that, but this is with, with Rauchy and Sullivan. 
Broughty and Sullivan Strategies, LLC, will also meet with state and legislative officials, agency and legislative staff, and other individuals as necessary for the accomplishment of the goals of the contract and um, contract can be voided and will provide reports of the current status of legislation during the legislative session and will advise of committee hearings on legislative interest to the county. So that's who they report to. I think it best um, with the legislative committee, I, I thank you for diving into this, but I think it's best because of the importance of this executive committee that the report should be given to the executive committee uh, because of the diversity of opportunities that will be presented, both financial, uh, transportation, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's best served here. Mr. Shepro. Uh, just a, a brief comment. Uh, I had the privilege of serving as the attorney at the time that uh, Karen McConaughey was uh, in office and dealt frequently with Rauchy and Sullivan uh, to the point of the need for someone to do that. And uh, the legislative committee has always been very diligent, but I just looked up to re get catch up. Uh, as of today, uh, and this is a session that has somewhat reduced because of COVID, the activity of the legislature, uh, there have been 4,183 Senate bills and 5,714 House bills uh, introduced in Springfield during the current session. That is 103 short of 10,000. Uh, and uh, none of us, I, the most diligent, I think, is any way that we're going to review 10,000 bills. Now, we know that many of those bills are not serious in the sense that they're to be a press release for the hometown newspaper, uh, but the key is understanding what bills you need to pay attention to. Uh, uh, Mr. Armstrong, who is been heavily involved with legislation affecting the assessors, assessment offices and assessment practices and real estate taxes will tell you that every session there are dozens and dozens of bills introduced related to that, um, most of which have no likelihood of going anywhere. But again, it's important to know what bills are the ones that we need to pay attention to and I guess the other thing I would suggest is, is that the problem has always been with the legislative committee structure. Um, in order to get an expression from the full board, the committee has to take action. The executive committee has to take action. And then eventually, sometime after the legislature is adjourned for the spring, uh, it might reach the floor of the board uh, to, to take a vote. Uh, and as those of you who have followed the legislative process in Springfield knows, uh, you sometimes have less than a day often to uh, respond. Uh, and it, you need to have a presence. You need to, it doesn't mean you have to attend every committee meeting but the process is, is it important to get your point of view across? And a lot of times the, con the hearings in Springfield are not like the congressional hearings on TV. They consist of somebody looking at a sheet of paper and seeing who signed in for uh, against a bill. And certain organizations, just all they have to do is sign in no. Uh, Illinois Municipal League, uh, many manufacturers association, a lot of heavyweight uh, on both sides of the aisle. Uh, for us to have a meaningful input as well as alerts and the, and I'm sorry to go on and on, and on but I'm almost done. Uh, the lobbyist tradition, this is not someone that hangs around in the lobby and grabs people as they come out and say, will you please vote for my bill? The information that they give to you 
uh, about what bills you need to pay attention to uh, is, I think, really irreplaceable. Uh, even the legislators, and many of them are very good about reporting to us about what's going on, uh, you can't track every bill. Uh, they discuss it in caucus, but again, you got 10,000 bills. And we also know that very often uh, you get to May 31st and then someone says, I propose Senate floor amendment one, strike everything in the bill and put in this new language. So uh, I, I would share the belief that we need to have a structure in place, one, to get this information to us and to organize it in a way that makes it meaningful. Uh, getting lots of information in an untimely fashion doesn't do us any good. Um, yeah, thank you, and Mr. Foss. Yeah, I would agree with everything Mr. Shepro said, and um, you know, it's just not realistic to expect our our part-time you know county board uh, legislative chairs, or at, at times we have had co-chairs, to stay on top of everything Mr. Shepro mentioned. Um, I would remind everybody that you know that you mentioned the, the year 2009 on that resolution. You know we were we we're at the height of a recession at that time, and we were looking for things that we could maybe live without. Um, but I think that was considered to be a, on a temporary basis. So uh, here we are, 13 years later. Uh, maybe it's time to put an end to the temporary aspect of it. Um, would this uh, go out for an RFQ then at yeah, some yes. point? And then yes, it we will. Would choose it a, a will firm? absolutely. Okay. Um, and. I had a conversation yesterday uh, with uh, Mrs. Meredith uh, from ComEd. She's the uh, government liaison. And she shared with me uh, the money that is going to be allocated to the state of Illinois, which has just been released. Uh, that is the $12 billion, B, uh, billion dollars for infrastructure. Let that just sit on you. Um, we're the fifth largest county in, in the state of Illinois. Uh, we need to be able to advocate for that. We're, I'm um, just scheduling a meeting uh, with some of our department heads to move forward on that discussion to learn more about what this opportunity can present to Kane County and how we can plan and organize and advocate for this uh, to make sure that our grant applications are uh, thoroughly uh, vetted and then distributed to the correct people uh, and advocated for so that we can also uh, be competitive in getting some of this important money for the county. Um, I spoke with the mayor of Elgin and I'm sure you're aware in the paper for our, uh, our representatives who represent the Elgin area uh, that the Kansas City and Canadian railroads are looking at merging uh, that if, if proved uh, later on this year, that track will run all the way from Mexico through to Canada, directly through Elgin, downtown Elgin. $3 billion worth of infrastructure support is gonna be needed to support that, uh, that new railroad. Uh, so they're gonna be knocking on doors. Uh, we're all gonna be knocking on doors. And I'm sure I'm looking at Tom right now I can recognize you without my glasses, <laughs> that uh, he's going to be looking at this money as well, because we have got a lot of uh, needs in our roads and transportations here in the county. So um, I think our next steps then, uh, with your approval, I'd like to uh, work with Mr. Shepro and we'll put together an RFQ um, and we'll start uh, accepting those. And then we'll assess and then bring this back to you. Uh, but I'll wait uh, courtesy so that we can get a more thorough understanding uh, through legislative committees since they've been kind enough to be able to do a presentation on this as well. Um, is that all right with you, Ms. Gums? Um, yes, after, you know, like I said before, after speaking with the legislative committee, we were planning to address this at that level. So we'll have that discussion in that meeting. Okay, so we'll wait for the RFQ until you're completed. Thank you. Mr. Uh, just briefly, uh, uh, I've also suggested, I think that uh, we have uh, both uh, Mr. Armstrong and Mr. Pollock 
who I believe was a former chair of the legislative committee at one time for the board. Uh, both of them have are very active in lobbying and I think their input into uh, how we go about this, uh, this process is uh, uh, important. There are lobbyists and then there are lobbyists and some probably deliver better value uh, for your money. Uh, again, it, it's, it's a multifaceted task. And, and I, yes. I know I talked with Mr. Armstrong extensively about this uh, in the past, and I, I think they'll have some good experience to bring to bear in how we put this together. Okay, very good. Uh, excellent suggestion. And perhaps um, they can help uh, with the legislative committee to do that report. Uh, yeah, Ms. Gum, Ms. Gums, they've, one of the two has already been confirmed for that presentation. Fantastic. Excellent. Good. Oh, I'm, I'm very glad. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, all right. The next one, I just want to give you additional information. Um, as we know, as we can see around, uh, around the room, many of us are no longer wearing a mask, and the mask mandate uh, has been taken down uh, by the governor. I, I have here, but it's not ready for prime time, uh, a resolution that I would like to present uh, to the full board next week. Uh, it, it, fast moving target on this. Uh, the final paperwork did not come through until late Monday night, and it was not able to be reviewed um, by our uh, ASAs until yesterday. Uh, so we wanna take a look at it one more time. We have an amended, we have a resolution currently uh, that states that we have a mask mandate. So we want to make sure that we amend that resolution appropriately uh, and formally uh, to allow some flexibility just in case something else happens that we can uh, resurrect a mask mandate or appropriate measures to stop um, the spread of a, of, of, uh, a virus. So we'll bring that to you um, and we'll make sure that it's done in plenty of time for your review. Um, and if there's uh, any questions here, we have Jamie Labrillo. Would you like to talk about this? Do you want to just give a, a just a little update? I can answer any questions if anyone has any. Um, right now, we do still have the resolution um, in place regarding masks in county buildings. Um, so Human Resources has held off in any communications to our employees until such time as we have that resolved. Um, so that's why we're hoping to get this through the board this month. Okay, so do I have your uh, consensus just to move this forward? I think it's important, a bit of housekeeping and necessary. Uh, and then we can formally inform um, uh, a letter can go out uh, telling everyone what we're doing uh, so that our employees and elected officials uh, throughout our campuses are, are informed. Okay, thank you. Very good. That's the last one I have. Yes, good. I'll just take this. It's all good. So now we're on to our preliminary board agenda. Agenda, Mr. Kenyon. Agriculture. Uh, to before you will be a an ordinance to address uh, the possible nuisance nuisance of too many bees in the wrong area and. Mr. Van Kirkhoff has done a, a great job of researching this, and we haven't had a lot of complaints, but um, people are afraid of bees, even though they're vital to our, our existence. We need them for pollinators, and it, this addresses how many hives can be, how close to other people, and it, it's just a make sense piece of ordinance. Do you want to move that? I will move it. I'll second. <laughs> Are there any questions? Here, hearing none, uh, please call the roll. Bates? 
Here, yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Braz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? <clears throat> Molina, yes. Sanchez? Sanchez, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sturgis? Sturgis, yes. Deppi? Deppi, yes. Jebro? I believe my vote is yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. Nice yes. Be sure. Save sure? the bees. <laughs> All right. Very cute. Okay, we had enough bee jokes. <laughs> okay, finance. Mr. Berman. Thank you, Madam Chair. What I'd like to do is uh, have a uh, motion and a second. And then I will read each of our items. And if there is any discussion we'll, or uh, clarification that anybody needs, we'll go with that. And then at the end, we'll vote on the uh, our consent agenda. Okay. All right. So move for approval, Tepe. Four seconds. All right. Thank you. Uh, item one. So items one through 23, subject to yes. Shepro. Thank you. Item one, authorizing a rollover of funds and amending the 2022 fiscal year budget for the circuit clerk's office to amount of $28,984, $984. Item two, authorizing rollover of funds and amending the 2022 fiscal year budget for the state's attorney's office in amount of $62,762. Item three, Authorizing coroner's office fiscal year, <clears throat> excuse me, 2021 budget adjustment uh, of $389,127, which comes from an insufficient amount budgeted for. Item four, authorizing miscellaneous fiscal year 2021 budget adjustments. And those adjustments are listed in page 24 through 26 of our Right. Item five, authorizing fiscal year 21 year end allocation budget adjustments and transfers of $6,700,000. And this is projected revenue over expenditure for 2021. Uh, item six, authorizing the transfer of adult justice center janitorial maintenance employees from the Kane County Building Management Department to the Kane County Sheriff's Office and further authorizing a fiscal year 2022 budget adjustment. And the amount of that is $251,112. Item seven, authorizing a fiscal year 22 budget adjustment of building management capital of funds related to the fiscal year 21 multi-purpose building construction budget. And that cost was $75,000. Item eight, approving the fiscal year 22 budget adjustment to the growing of Kane Fund for a local livestock market assessment grant, $5,000. Ratify an emergency purchase of affidavit for adult justice center custodial and maintenance service and authorized and related budget adjustments, $47,820. Item 10, authorizing creation of a COVID Payroll Reimbursement Fund, number 387, related fiscal year 21 and fiscal year 22 budget adjustments and transfers. And that includes $18,479,234. Item 11, authorizing reclassification of reimbursements of COVID related expenses from savings and special reserve fund to COVID payroll reimbursement fund. $508,916. Stop me anytime you'd like to discuss one of these. <laughs> Item 12, authorized reimbursement of COVID related expenses for COVID payroll reimbursement fund and related fiscal year 21 budget adjustments, 660,288. Item 13, authorized and reclassification of American Rescue Plan funded COVID mass vaccination expenses and related fiscal year 21 and fiscal year 22 budget adjustments and transfers 
$111,715. Item 14, authorizing acceptance of 50 fiscal year 22 COVID-19 response grant agreement, $775,000. Item 15, authorizing renewal of contract with financial advisor, and that's with Spear Financial. Item 16, authorizing an RFP for mandated service study. Shepro, come in. Yes, Mr. Shepro. Uh, I'm, I think this, I made comments at finance about this. Uh, uh, this is purportedly, I guess, a update to the services study that was done in 2017. Uh, there had previously been a mandated service study done uh, when McConaughey was uh, chair. Uh, <clears throat> I have many issues with the, the way that this study, if it's done, would be carried out, whether it's necessary and, and, and why we are doing it. Uh, my experience with the uh, first study was that essentially the consultant interviewed the elected officials and the department heads to ask them what their mandated services were uh, and then uh, basically charged us to tell us what they said. Uh, I would be very concerned about what is the expertise. Oh, and they also uh, gave us photocopies mm -hmm. of the statutes uh, related to those uh, mandated services. Uh, the the our first study did not include uh, any financial analysis as to what what the cost of those services were. Uh, my concern is many fold about this. First, I think the elected officials and the uh, department heads uh, are well acquainted with what mandated services are. Uh, perhaps we're not all clear about what they are, but I don't think we have to hire somebody to interview these folks to, to tell us. Uh, also, uh, what's statutorily mandated and what the public demands are not necessarily the same thing. We are not mandated to have a transportation division. Uh, we are not mandated to have a health department. We are not mandated to have a development department or zoning. And yet I would doubt very much if the public would be in favor of abolishing any of those uh, departments or oversight. Uh, the biggest concern I have though, is that it would appear that the biggest part of this study, we heard discussion at finance, they say, well, we need the data about the cost. Uh, I would certainly be willing to be corrected by the state's attorney or the other elected officials, but I'm wondering what expertise an outsider brings to the issue of, for example, what is going to be the cost of implementing the Safety Act? Uh, I don't think we know what that cost is going to be because in many cases, well, first off, they can't say, well, we've done this somewhere else because they haven't. This is new. Uh, all of our elected officials in the judicial public safety sphere are grappling with what they need, when they need it, how are they going to get it? Um, and again, I, I don't think that there is somebody out there that is infused with great expertise that our own people don't already have. So what are we paying for? Uh, are they going to do their own study? I don't know. I think that we have to be very careful about how we put anything together. I've also heard it said that if we're going to go to the voters, we need an outside person to come in and say the numbers that we're getting from our electeds or department heads are actually accurate. Uh, 100 to 150,000 seems a lot to pay for something that is simply a cosmetic, yes, here's somebody outside who agrees with the numbers we've created. So uh, I will vote against this today. Uh, I guess 
if we really feel we have to do an update, I think we should be very careful and have substantial board and elected official input into what the RFP uh, is actually going to produce. Is again, I my fear is that we're going to get charged to basically have them interview ourselves and then tell us what we said. So, I I would uh, uh, at this point, as I say, I would intend to vote no this morning. Madam Chair. Oh, we have many comments on this. Why don't we have Dale speak and then everyone else? Yes. Pardon? Mr. Berman. Yes. Oh, I, recognize I think you. it's, uh, I think we're all interested in knowing what the costs are. And I think that what we're really paying for is someone to accumulate all that information, doing the, the investigation and the interviewing of all our department heads and all the uh, elected officials and putting that together in a report. Now, maybe this is something that our finance department uh, should be doing, but I think our, our finance director is uh, certainly, uh, if not overwhelmed, uh, his department is quite busy doing uh, the things that is required to do, and this is an additional to that. So I think that we're estimating that probably 100,000 rather than 150,000, but it's just to bring up to date, and uh, hopefully they've got something to work from. But I think we, we need to see those numbers. I know that when I talk to people, I, I, I love to have the, what it's really costing us to, uh, to do the things that we're doing that have been put upon us by, uh, by state statute. Thank you, Mr. Sergis. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, I, I can't impress enough the need for having this study to be completed. Um, I, I, as a baseline measure, we should be doing this on a regular basis. Um, and, and to the best of my knowledge, what we have is quite aged right now. And, and to be looking at, you know, a three inch thick binder for our budget and not knowing specifically what our minimum threshold mandates are um, and, and what our wants are versus our needs sort of thing is critical to me. I, I don't know how we function as a board without having that as a base charter. Um, on the other hand, I do agree with Ken in terms, I, I don't know that I'd be interested in paying an outside firm to tell us what those costs are. I think that we, we should be able to compute those costs in-house, but I, I disagree with Ken in terms of, we need an outside firm to be able to do that research and say, without interpretation, this is what your mandate is, or, or, or these are what your mandates are that you need to comply with. So I would be voting in the affirmative, affirmative on this, but if there was a way to, Ken, if there was a way to modify that so that we were doing the costs internally, I, I would be also be in support of that, so. Okay, thank you, Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin? No. Um, I agree that we need to have knowledge as to what these numbers are. And I agree that I don't want to be Martin. paying a oh, fancy, con a fancy, a, con a consulting firm, what I consider to be a fee based on an interpretive obligation if in fact all they're going to do is glean information and then give it back to us in a compiled form. I think it's important to note today that what we're approving is the issuance uh, of an RFP and you know my thought would be if, if in fact as we look at the RFP or we look at the proposals there's going to be substance to it beyond uh, a bunch of ledger entries and a report um, I, I'm going to support the ultimate vote. If, in fact, all we're talking about is is computing and compiling and giving us that information, to me, that's the function of an accounting firm that could be done in a few hours based upon it, having obtained some raw data. And we don't need to be paying what I would believe is included in any consultant's fee, which is an interpretive amount. So I, I want to see the. I want to. I would like to see the RFP, but I'd like to. I want to see the proposals, to know that there's meat in them, and that it's not just a bunch of fluff that we're going to pay somebody for. Any well, I'm going to. I'm going to support to support today's vote, but I haven't voted on the, on the ultimate contract yet until I see what we get and how we get it. Okay. Okay. Bates, please. Yes, Miss hmm. Bates. Uh, this is a very difficult question for me. I can see both sides of the issue. 
Um, I would, I really appreciate Mr. Sergis's comments that we need this data, but if it could be done in house, that might be uh, just as good and save us a lot of money. And also in my experience, when there's a RFP for 100 to $150,000, it's always $150,000. So um, maybe we could amend to say uh, up to $100,000. <laughs> I, I, would, I would like to make that amendment. Thank you. Well, it does say uh, it would cost 100,000. Uh, so I think we're comfortable with 100,000. I would agree, no more than. Okay. Madam Chair, if I can, sir, just very specific. I do believe we should be outsourcing this um, but in terms of putting the cost together, we could do those in-house. Okay. So I would like an outside firm researching this and give us their version of this is what we believe the mandates are. The cost component of that we should be doing in-house. So, um, yeah. If I may, just one quick comment. Um, I've heard a number of you say that uh, we may be able to do this in-house. Um, I want you to think very carefully who <laughs> what department is going to be able to put all of this information uh, into a document um, being able to collect all of the material and put it together succinctly um, and start putting budget numbers on that um, what the allocation is and for five years worth of, of legislation um, to be able to really research that because from what my understanding is, what we've heard from all of our department heads, they are stretched to the max already, and we're demanding more and more of them. And once again, I, I, I want to remind you that there is um, the app, I didn't share this with you, the applications for the, uh, the $80 billion, uh, the grant applications are going to be going out in uh, the second quarter of this year. So we're going to be demanding an awful lot of them very quickly. Yes, I think I Mr. Shepard was next and then Mr. Um, the, the problem with what the comments about the staff is they are busy, but who are the consultants going to talk to to get the information? They're going to talk to staff. So necessarily staff is going to have to be heavily involved in addressing the questions that are, should be put to them by the consultant. If the consultant is going to tell us that they're gonna do all this without talking to staff, then I, I guess that would really be a concern to me. So uh, again, I, if they're doing this in any remote way toward the ideas that have been expressed, they're gonna to have to, the, the department heads, the elected officials are going to have to spend a lot of time uh, talking to them about what their needs are. Uh, you know, when I looked at the RFPs from 2017, uh, most of them were out of state. So they, it's hard for them to say, we're experts on what Illinois' new law is. Uh, the way they're going to find out is they're going to go to the state's attorney or the circuit clerk and say, well, uh, tell us what you think. Tell us how you plan to respond. Uh, but what I do hear from everybody is, is that the key here is what is in the RFP? What is the scope of what we're asking to do? And so I think as this will pass today, I do just hope that uh, we have a mechanism in place where we have input, those of us with concerns about this have input into that RFP process. Uh, for example, I, I, Mr. Sergis's comments, I think, are very apropos uh, as to what we want to do. It's the way the study is structured that's going to be critical if we're going to get what we want out of it. I presume we are not going to ask them to interpret the law. Uh, I, I don't think they would have the expertise to do that. And I think that was a good point that was raised. So uh, that's all I have. OK, thank, thank you. you, Mr. Martin. <clears throat> well, I, I think we're all circling around the same point. We want to see what what the bid looks like and what we're going to get for our dollars. 
Um, you know, I, I would I would share that the last time we did this, uh, the the conclusion was is that we were operating very efficiently and uh, uh, and had uh, very little capacity to do additional work, which kind of leads us into the comment of saying <coughs> whatever it is we do here. I'm going to support having some kind of outside involvement because I just don't think that, uh, that, that to say we're going to do it in house when uh, the house is already smaller than the responsibilities makes a lot of fiscal sense. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Bates, um, please. Yes, Ms. Bates. So you, you, um, Madam Chair, you talked about the um, the grants um, that we will be seeking. Um, yes. the, the consultant doesn't write the grants, correct? The consultant, the, no, 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 no. What I, my, my suggestion was, my comment was that the department heads um, who are involved with uh, the ability to uh, write grants for this money uh, are going to be very busy uh, making sure that they comply with it. These are going to be challenging opportunities with all of this. And we want to make sure that their focus is going to be on that rather than having to do an updated report. Uh, and frankly, who's gonna be the admin who's going to put all this information into one document? Right, okay. I, I, I'm, being, I'm gonna I'll drill down a little bit. So we have to make sure that um, we have somebody who can lead this. Okay, thank you. Sure. Mr. Martin. If I may make one last comment. I don't know when we formally announced that we're starting to work on next fiscal year's budget, but in the, the real fact is everybody starts talking about it about March 1st. Mm -hmm. So all of our department heads and uh, elected officials are either probably or have already probably begun or are going to begin. Okay compiling all this data in any event so that they can put their budgets together. So I, there, there's, there's gonna be some significant overlap. I just believe that the compilation and, uh, and, and review needs to, require, needs to have somebody outside if we're gonna get it done without overburdening. Okay, thank you. People here. So is there any other discussion on this? Call a question. All right. Well, we're, uh, we're, stays on the agenda. We're still, we're still yeah. just stays on the agenda. We haven't voted yet. We're just going through the information. Yeah. We're Mr. On. Shepard, should we take that off the uh, consent agenda? And uh, yes. All right. So we'll remove item 16 from our consent agenda. Let's move on with uh, item 17, authorizing professional service for consulting and project management for the IT department of uh, 280,000. Uh, an RFP for professional services that item 18 authorizing the extension of existing contracts for outpatient drug treatment services for the Kane County Court Services, $133,000. Item 19 authorizing for intergovernmental agreement with the Supreme Court of Illinois for the lease extension of space in the Third Street Courthouse for the 16th Circuit Arbitration Center. And this is a five-year, talking about a five-year lease at $30,526.92 a year. Uh, item 20, authorizing intergovernmental agreement with Elgin Community College, Wabansi Community College, Kishwaukee College, and for the provision of uh, WIOA training services. It's a uh, million five hundred thousand dollars reimbursed by a uh, by federal funds. <clears throat> Item 21, adopting training policy to the personnel policy handbook and the training policy and guidelines. Item 22, authorized ongoing intergovernmental agreement between the Plato Township and the County of Kane for household hazardous waste collection services. Uh, this is a third day, three years plus, uh, is $3,780 a year. And item number 23, approving the January 2022 claims paid $20,584,541.50. Madam Chair. So our motion then should be. Madam, Madam Chair, I'd like to amend my motion 
to have it say that we approve the finance consent agenda items one through 23 with the exception of item 16. Thank you. Yeah. Change my second with that. Maybe okay. Second with that. okay. So may I um, call the roll for items as amended, as amended, which removes item number 16. Bates? Yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Fraz? Yes. Thumbs? Thumbs, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sturgis? Sturgis, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Chepro? Chepro, yes. You're up. Yes. Oh, we need a motion to approve item 16. Caius moves. moves. Frost seconds. Frost seconds. Is there any further discussion on this item? <clears throat> if not, clerk, please call the roll. Bates? Uh, would you please come back to me? Berman? Berman, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Frost? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Kenyon? No. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, no. Sanchez? Yes. Strathman? Yes. Sergis? Sergis, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Shepro? Shepro, no. Bates? No. Shiro? Yes. Pass. Thank you, Mr. Berman. Thank you. Mr. Sergis? We're moving um, uh, and amending the county code to add chapter 30 lobbyist registration ordinance and repeal lobbying from the vision three ethics ordinance. This has been ping ponging through the human services community uh, 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 committee for probably six to eight months now. Um, Vincent from the state's attorney's office has been diligently trying to uh, keep us abreast, but things in Springfield seem to be at a standstill and then moving forward and then three steps backwards and two steps forward. But I think we finally have an, an ordinance that is in compliance, doesn't leapfrog anything and, and we're satisfied with. So at this point, I move the uh, motion to move this forward. Ken and we'll second. Okay, very good. Is there any discussion on this? Oh, clerk, please call the roll. Bates? Bates, yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Fraz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Strathman? Yes. Sturgis? Sturgis, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Shepro? Shepro, yes. 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 Very good. Uh, Ms. Molina? Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, our judicial and public safety has one item we'd like to place on consent agenda. I move to authorize the fourth contract extension for food, laundry, and commissary service at the King County Adult Justice Center for the office of the sheriff. Jeff Brown, yeah, a second. second. I'll defer to Mr. Davis. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shepro. Is there any discussion on laundry? <clears throat> Question, Bates? Uh, yes, Ms. Bates. Does something like this go out for RFP? Um, it's an extension to a current agreement, so, so it, it had in the past. So it doesn't need an RFP every time I take it? Um, no. I believe, no. no, it does not. Our state's attorney was nodding her head no. It's exercising, an existing, no. It's exercising an existing contract, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Bates. Bates, yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Braz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Sanchez, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sergis? Sergis, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Shepro? Shepro, yes. Uh, yes. yes. 
All right, always a pleasure, transportation. Mr. Franz. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I have eight items, but I will be removing items two and eight from the agenda, and we'll be bringing those back at a later date. So I will move item one and then items three through seven and ask for a second. Sure, Mr. Second. Um, Mr. Shepherd. Yes, that'll be fine. Okay. Uh, item one is uh, this approves five new and six renewal of uh, routine adopt the highway applicants. Items three, four, five, and six, these are four resolutions all pertaining to um, KDOT is taking over uh, supervision uh, mm -hmm. and uh, receiving of funds from the Association for Indi Individual Development. This is for the Ride and Cane program. So these four resolutions pertain to essentially the paperwork and contracts transferring that from AID to KDOT. Uh, item seven, this is an amendment to an engineering agreement with Alfred, ben Alfred Benish and company, $360,140. This is related to the removal of contaminated soil on our final section of Longmeadow Parkway, uh, section C2. Uh, this contaminated soil was a known uh, factor when we uh, started the project. So this just moves forward with that and they will oversee that. Um, and uh, that's it, item eight was removed for future consideration. Okay, I, I see applause. <laughs> is that uh, to eliminate the contaminated soil? Uh, how long has that been? Uh, that's the, been in the a soil while. issue. Yes. Yeah, well, the soil issue is known. This is where there used to be an asphalt plant up there. Um, so it was known from the start. Uh, the state of Illinois oversees this part of the, the process because they're uh, funding it. And uh, they did what's called, they, they allowed a couple of the con, of the bidders, contractors to do what's called value engineering to look at alternatives to save some money. It took some time, but those alternatives really didn't work out. So we're kind of starting from scratch. So we received, uh, we, we put it out for, uh, or this is just for the, the engineering of that, but the, the uh, bids did go out and it came back. We only had one bidder. So we'd like to go back and throw a, a larger net and see what we come back with. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thanks for the explanation. Um, are there any other comments? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Bates? Bates, yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Braz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Sanchez, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sturgis? Sturgis, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Chepro? Chepro, yes. 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 Okay, very good. All right, so that's the, uh, the end of our uh, agenda items. Um, I believe we will be going to executive session. Um, Madam Chair? Yes. Caius, I move to go into closed session to discuss, number one, the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees, and number two, probable and imminent litigation. Sharp roll will second. Okay. All in favor? And, uh, roll call. Roll call. <laughs> Bates? Bates, yes. Bates. Berman? Yes. Berman, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Braz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Sanchez, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sturgis? Sturgis, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Chepro? Chepro, yes. Passes. We are now going into executive session. We are now in open session. Clerk, please call the roll. Bates? Bates, yes. Herman? Herman's here. Davis? Davis here. Ford? Ross? Gums? Gums here. Kenyon? Here. Caius? Caius here. Martin? Martin present. Molina? Molina present. Sanchez? Sanchez here. Strathman? Strathman here. Sturgis? Sturgis here. Tepe? Tepe here. Chepro? Chepro present. Here on. Present. Okay. Are there, uh, we're on to committee reports. Are there any committee reports? It's this is not a report. I would like to remind you that next month we'll be bringing in the young people from the 4-H. Correct. 
to be part of our meeting. Correct. I'm looking forward to that. Well, it's, it'll be good. Are we picking a topic for them to discuss? Usually yeah. you pick a topic for them to discuss, like like the, the lawsuit. Oh, just how, about, how about how about <laughs> does do, if you have any suggestions on this, let me know. Now, what you think would be a, a a good by the end of the week, so I can uh, I can let them know so they can do their research. How about regenerative agriculture? What? How about our bee ordinance? Well, we're going to adopt well, it. Okay, the bee ordinance is going to be adopted. Um, but why not think about it and uh, just just. Let me know. Uh, send your information to Jane, and she'll uh, collect it all. We, we have a little issue in South Elgin where some of the residents are shooting out their back door, and they're actually pretty close to a, uh, a little what what shooting. <laughs> bang bang. That's what I was going. <laughs> bang bang. Shotguns. They're shooting clay pigeons, and they're close to the neighbors, and it's it's kind of uh, discerning to move out to the suburbs so you can have somebody shoot at your shoot back Thanks. porch. Your, your cat. Or well, the state's attorney will be involved. I it, imagine the sheriff should be involved. In that. That. <laughs> Terrifying squirrels. Give them the list of topics for the referendum. You might want to try the South Elgin oh, yeah. police. Uh, and pick. Send all your suggestions to Jane. <laughs> Right. I'm sure they're, they're going to be wonderful. This isn't quite a committee report, but are we to deal with this resolution relative to the, to the furniture no, purchase? No, that, that is, uh, we've removed that intentionally. Oh, okay, all right. Thank you for bringing that up, that uh, we've come up with a, a better solution. But Herman Miller furniture for the board members? <laughs> <laughs> for your specific office, we're having a redesign there. <laughs> Retiring board members. <laughs> Set of, set of a watch. Madam Chair, under committee reports, um, Mr. Iqbal has asked us to uh, look at a couple of items in human services, and some of those are, are the uh, committee structures. Um, within the committee structure, we have uh, Jake Zimmerman's uh, Veterans Administration, Veterans Affairs Department to reporting to human services. I believe that the charter requires that to be reporting to Vern's uh, public service and and we'll be working with Vern to make that transition happen. Well, it's, I think that has to be approved first, though, by the board as we're changing 2-48. As, as it's, it's, it's already in 2-48. We don't know why it's in human services. We're just putting it back to where it's supposed. I don't know. 2-48. I inherited. It's supposed to be public service. It's supposed to be public service. So there's really no amendment needed. needed. Just, we just need to shuffle. Jim. Yeah, oh, and so I just oh, wanted to acknowledge that. Okay, good. Excellent. This year, Mr. Teppe. Mr. Serge and I have talked about this in the past. Okay, it's okay. very good. It's Mr. Ford. Thank you, Madam Chair. In our jobs committee, um, we're looking to have our roundtable discussion in uh, April right now. Okay. This is with other businesses? Yes. Okay. Madam good. Chair? Um, hold on just a second, please. Yes, Ms. Bates. Uh, in the Energy and Environmental Committee, me, uh, committee, we are working on a climate action plan, which will include a CEGA plan to get as much of that $9.5 billion to come back to Kane County as possible. By my math in my head, I say that's between 40 and $400 million that we should be bringing back to Kane County. So we've got work to do. Thank you. Good to have a tight number. Give or take a dollar or so. Okay, we're uh, looking forward to getting those resources. Um, we can spend it. And the infrastructure bill, of course, uh, we'll, we're gonna be bringing uh, your committee in with that as well, because there's gonna be a lot of opportunities for, for them to participate. Um, is there anything else? Mr. King. I think it's time to have a motion to adjourn and get Mr. Sergis on the streets. <laughs> Who made that motion? I'll make it. Up. <laughs> Selling Girl Scout cookies. Oh, second. What's going on with it? Jeff Bro will second. Very good. <laughs> uh, you quit. All in favor, aye. 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 aye.
Aye. Aye. Aye. Opposed?